Wherever outlaw biker gangs are battling for turf, there is always the risk of violent confrontation. The Mongols and the Hells Angels have been at war for three decades. In Laughlin, Nevada, the public saw just how much the Mongols and the Hells Angels hate each other in 2002. A truce between the clubs was broken when more than 100 Hells Angels and Mongols brawled on the Harris Laughlin Casino floor during the Laughlin River Run. At two in the morning, 40 members of the Mongols were partying at the bar in the casino when a group of Hells Angels entered. We showed up at the casino to confront the uh, Mongols. I walked up and tried to stop it. The green arrow on the footage of this actual event follows Roger Pinney. There was a few brothers that were kind of trying to defuse the situation. I was making negotiations. I was a national prisoner. It was my duty, I felt, but, you know, to, to go up there and try to stop this thing because I know from experience, once that first throw, bottle, anything comes down, people are going to die. One brother, Ray, he just uh, he didn't like what he was hearing, and he kicked the guy in the chest. From that on, it just was no stopping anything. We were uh, pulling out hammers and hitting people, and I mean, it just escalated from one thing to the next. Knives, hammers, wrenches, bats, and guns were used during the fight, sending casino workers and players scrambling for cover. I saw an HA grabbing one of my brothers. I grabbed him from behind and pulled him off. And that's when I uh, stabbed uh, three times in the back and thrown to the ground and, and kicked and punched. The deadly brawl left two Hells Angels and one Mongol dead. In total, over a dozen bikers were injured. Kind of a overreaction to a situation that I don't think needed to go that far, but we will do what we got to do when we got to do it. Despite their violent reputation, the Hells Angels claim they are held together on the strong bonds of brotherhood. A brotherhood that extends beyond the walls of prison. In Florence, Arizona, every year, Hell's Angels from around the country gather for the Florence Run. The purpose of the run is to support club members incarcerated in several of Florence's nine jail complexes. This is the 25th anniversary of the prison run. It started as a way for the bikers to show homage to their incarcerated friends and their clubs. We have a large police presence here just to make sure that we don't have any problems. Police anticipate 1,500 Hells Angels and affiliates will participate in the prison run. I need another set of barricades right here, all the way across. They set up barricades along the route. During the two-day run, Hells Angels ride past the prisons and go into the town of Florence. For police and Hells Angels, the run went as planned. Historically, the Florence prison run has gone smoothly. The same cannot be said for the USA run. The last event in Montana brought rape allegations. And the year before, in Arkansas, a fight with members of a rival gang involved knives and baseball bats and left four people seriously wounded. In Minnesota, state, local, and federal authorities are prepared for the coming onslaught of one percenter outlaw bikers. As the Hells Angels USA run nears, reports start coming in that the Hells Angels rivals, the outlaws, and potentially their allies, the Mongols, are threatening to cause trouble at the run. Understanding the violence the Angels are capable of when confronted by a rival gang, law enforcement is potentially facing a big problem. July 30th, Carlton, Minnesota. 
the start of the Hells Angels USA run. Carlton has only 810 residents, and with only 19 sworn officers, Sheriff Kelly Lake calls in reinforcements from around the country. Agents from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms are on the ground. ICE, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, lends a helicopter for aerial surveillance. Police from across the state send officers. And the media arrives. Everyone is watching for a potential confrontation between the Hells Angels and one of their rivals, the Outlaws. They are a club located in the neighboring state. But so far, driving rain has seen most of the Angels spend their first day in the casino, bar, and hotel. I think it'd be very accurate to say that the Hells Angels have been locked down since they've gotten here between law enforcement and the weather not cooperating. Uh, there hadn't been a lot of places for them to go. The Angels rented a local bar and parked trailers to shield themselves from prying eyes. Word arrives from police conducting surveillance in Wisconsin. The outlaws and possibly their allies, the Mongols, are beginning to mass on the border. Hundreds of Hell's Angels descend on the tiny town of Carlton in northern Minnesota for their annual USA run. For three days, an uneasy peace has been maintained through a heavy police presence. But now, there's a new threat, as several chapters of the rival Outlaws Motorcycle Club have been pouring into the nearby state of Wisconsin, less than an hour away. Each group is prepared to do whatever it takes to defend territory. For the Outlaws, that includes Wisconsin, while the Angels claim Minnesota. All week, the heavy police presence has managed to keep trouble to a minimum. And so far, their sworn enemies, the outlaws, have not crossed from nearby Wisconsin. Law enforcement is working around the clock to try and keep the two clubs apart. They fear a clash in Carlton could have national implications. It's the last day of the USA run. Many angels will be heading for an even bigger rally at Sturgis, South Dakota, when they ride out of town in a matter of hours. The police know that if there's trouble in Carlton, it will escalate at Sturgis. Steve Cook wants to personally size up the potential threat and travels to Wisconsin. They're going to go at it at some point, somewhere. Uh, it's anybody's guess where that's going to happen at. Only God, the outlaws, and the Hells Angels know when that's going to happen. We're approaching Superior, Wisconsin. This is where we understand that the outlaws are congregating. Uh, and uh, we're going to kind of drive over here and just kind of take a look, see, and uh, see what kind of numbers they have see what their their attitude is you know kind of get a, a feel for them if they look like they're on watch on guard see if they're amped up at all there are outlaws but no sign of the mongols cook is also relieved that there is relatively few of them fearing a deadly clash between the rivals the next morning Police deploy aerial surveillance to monitor those on the move from Carlton. It's uh, almost like psychological warfare. They're flying over the top of the Hells Angels. It's a high intimidation for them. On Interstate 35, a group of angels are spotted making a run for the border just two miles ahead. If they are allowed to cross it and encounter the outlaws, a violent altercation seems certain. It's a race against time as the police attempt to surround them. The 
angels are corralled into a parking lot where they're searched for weapons and questioned. Eventually, they are allowed to leave. The outlaws and the Hells Angels respected each other's turf, and the USA run passed without major incident. The five-day event brought over a thousand traffic stops and 33 tickets. Three Hells Angels were arrested, one member from New York for driving a stolen motorcycle. One percenter biker clubs maintain that they are misunderstood and unfairly targeted by law enforcement. However, those who monitor the organizations insist that for many members, the clubs are simply a cover for widespread violence and criminality. The Hells Angels motto sums up the two points of view. When we do right, no one remembers. When we do wrong, no one forgets. There's a mystique, I would say, about Hells Angels. One percent are clubs. There's a mystique to it. It's like that saying goes, for those that understand, no explanation is needed. For those that don't understand, no explanation is possible. Police know one percenter biker gangs aren't going anywhere. We're gonna do what we have to do to get the bad guys. Obviously within the law, we kind of view it as, if we uh, you know, don't get you today, we'll get you tomorrow. I think in this country, they'd have to change the Constitution first before they could outlaw Hells Angels. The club has always been very good at overcoming and adapting. Hasn't been around this long by accident, that's for sure.